Well, I'm on the farm today, and uh, it appears to be a beautiful day. Uh, but we've had uh, rain uh, for several days in a row now. Even though, even though the flags are still, uh, there's a steady breeze uh, blowing through here. You can kind of see some of the leaves on the trees uh, blowing around. Did I mention we had rain? The creek is rolling, and even though the skies are clearing up, uh, there's still water rolling out of these mountains into this stream. And so, you know, I, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if it got up into here uh, later on this evening or in the morning. I'm not complaining because uh, we need rain uh, bad. So there the flags have picked up the breeze again. It's cool too. It's like 55 degrees. So we're ready to cut hay and uh, we're just looking for a suitable window and uh, got the Massey Ferguson 1105 out here. And I got the Crone 2801 CV uh, on the back of it and uh, I've just got it sitting here. I'm doing some maintenance on it and uh, I got to put that put the drive shaft on. I use a different length drive shaft between this tractor and the John Deere. And I didn't used to have to do that, but when I put this quick hitch on there, that uh, that kind of extended the length out such that I needed a, a separate drive shaft. And uh, I have to tie these hoses back because when in a turn they rub on that drive shaft. You can see right there. So I'm going through and uh, greasing up everything and uh, this is a tine imp impeller machine as you've probably seen in some of my other videos. It's a, it does an excellent job with the uh, grass hay. Right here is the drive shaft and what I'm doing I don't know if you recall in one of my other videos uh, last year I had a, a video on uh, where I was in a rant about some of my grease guns and I'm not sure I quite understand but uh, the new grease guns that I got except for the uh, shoot I don't forgot the name of the the something lube grease gun <laughs> uh, they snag they'll snag on the, the nipple of these grease circs and so one of them I couldn't get it off and I wound up breaking the nipple off right there so I got to replace that and I got another one I actually took it off the other drive shaft I'm, I'm pretty sure it's metric but uh, I need to pull that off put that one on and then I need to find uh, find another one of these probably ought to find a couple of them uh, but I need to grease up this uh, shaft and put it on the machine so there's the grease circ I took out and right next to the one I'm putting in this is actually one of the easier repairs on this farm it just boggles my mind that you know they've been using grease circs probably for a hundred years or more and they can't make a grease gun that'll just fit on it and come right off but apparently uh, here in this present century that's just not uh, uh, something that's easily done alright so that zerk's in there and I'm not going to bore you with uh, uh, you know doing the complete maintenance on this uh, on this mower but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of walk walk around and highlight uh, some things that I do need to do uh, the most important is in behind this shield uh, there's a slip clutch and you got to uh, loosen it so that it you know it's not frozen uh, that's your only protection if something binds up uh, inside this gearbox or down in the cutter bed uh, if you deliver in this case 117 118 horse PTO 
into this gearbox and there's something from here downstream jammed up you know you might as well figure on buying another mower conditioner so that's a very important thing and it's called venting crone calls it venting so i need to do that and then i'll check the the oils uh there's sight glasses uh on this gearbox and then there's uh pipe plugs you take loose on the, the gearbox up there and then you know there's just uh, grease circs all over this thing's got like a bazillion grease circs on it and uh, grease circs here down here all these pivot points have grease circs uh, these parallel bars uh, even down here there's a bearing uh, on that uh, roller uh, you got to grease that uh, there's some uh, grease circs uh, up there and uh, and I, what I you can reach in and grease the drive shaft in here it's easier though just to take this panel off it just drops right off with these uh, there's four bolts on each side and then I have to take this loose and uh, grease the uh, the u-joint and uh, there's some grease circs around this uh, uh, around this gearbox, so I'll be doing that, and uh, and then I'll be ready to go. So this is the first uh, first round. I probably should probably should have already had this done, but uh, I've been busy frying other fish, and uh, as you've seen in some of my videos. Uh, doing some cleanup here uh, in advance of our reunion, but uh, I wanted to get the 1105 out and run it a little bit, and uh, and then I wanted to uh, I wanted to uh, kind of get this thing greased up and the clutch uh, the slip clutch uh, so that it's uh, I know it's not locked up, and then I'll run it a little bit, just make sure everything you know runs up just fine. And then when uh, the window presents itself to cut, which we're looking for, uh, we'll be ready to go. And of course, I got my baler and my my uh, hay rake tether, my Vermeer. And uh, I'll just say, if I hadn't already, it's May the eighth, Mother's Day weekend, and we've uh, even though it's sunny and clear right now, it was. Uh, rainy and cold i mean we had a lot of rain and uh i know one night alone we had an inch and a half uh on the rain gauge and uh so these fields even with the wind blowing there's still some dampness underneath when you walk you can see it on your shoes and you can see a little mud on those tires where i came across the lane from my uh, uh, white barn with the green roof and uh so uh sometimes when you lay hay down on ground that's just saturated uh the water out of the ground wants to evaporate into the hay before it evaporates on into the sky so it makes it harder to uh, dry uh, monday tuesday and wednesday are going to be uh, uh, clear and sunny uh, it's going to be a little colder on monday tomorrow uh, tuesday and Wednesday it's going to be in the mid to upper 70s. The lows will be down in the, the mid 40s, I think. I think tomorrow's going to be about 37 degrees, I think I saw on the forecast. But, uh, you know, I, I, it was my day job. Uh, I'm just a little concerned. I might need a little more time than that. And then Thursday it's supposed to rain, and Friday and Saturday so i can't get myself in a jam uh, uh where i got to take more time than i need to from my job and then with rain coming um uh, i'm just a little skittish to cut so uh what we're doing we thought about cutting today but uh what we're doing we're just going to kind of slow down here uh, do a nice job prepping our equipment and uh get everything ready to go and hopefully in another week or so week or two uh, we'll cut one of the reasons i wanted to cut today uh and early 
is as soon as we, we we would essentially be clipping these fields but what we would do is we would eliminate the stems for the year and uh, everything that would come after this would be second cutting so it was some uh there was some merit to cutting today with the rains coming this weekend uh to you know just like your lawn when you cut it the first time it, it the growth jumps and then you get some rain and the next thing you're out there you're you're mowing grass every three or four days around your house and it's no different on a hay field so we want second cutting uh especially this year uh and so that's kind of the uh that's kind of what our rationale was for uh, trying to mow today but uh, we'll get it i mean it'll we'll get more yield if we wait obviously and uh prices are going to be uh pretty high i'm i'm been reading on the internet and uh i'm i'm afraid to put a price on my hay right now it just seems like uh these hay prices i mean i'm seven dollars a bale seems like a low price and i'm seeing prices people talking 10 12 14 dollars for a square bale of hay so i don't know what we'll put on ours but uh we're not going to try to gouge uh especially our repeat customers but the one and dones they may pay uh they may get something uh that would make them want to be a repeat customer so or maybe not all right, talked a lot. Uh, didn't want to bore you to death with uh, uh, doing the maintenance on this cutter at the Massey 1105. Wonderful tractor. And uh, the Crone 2801 CV. And, you know, we're ready to kick off hay season and get it going. And uh, we'll talk to you later.